Good morning, everyone. You are live with Jonathan Manis, aka the One Leg Bandit, and uh, we are here today to talk about image monitoring. And I have the Vice President of Image Monitoring USA, Mr. Michael Talcott, here with me today. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, John. Thank you for having us. Hey, I really appreciate you. Uh, you know, we're doing some great work at the VA and the DoD. We are placing units and. Our main focus today, we want to talk about some things that the VA and the DOD may not even really know about yet that image monitoring offers. So I wanted to give you this outstanding platform, if you would, uh, Mr. Talcott, and just go ahead and let everyone know about the Dolphin system that you have there behind you. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. It, you guys have done such a great job with the Falcon and the physiologic system. And Falcon Pro is a fantastic unit, as you know. And we really wanted to highlight on this um, brief meeting the dolphin and its feature. It's a transcranial Doppler TCD system. So is that what transcranial Doppler means is that we are actually penetrating into the skull with Doppler waveforms and we can monitor flow on the MCA, ACA, PCA, anterior cerebral. We can do basilar vertebral with that probe. And the reason that's so essential is you get patients that come in with head trauma that are in vasospasm. You get patients that have bleeds, and they come in with a stroke, we can do all of that, monitor all those patients, and also give you a quick diagnosis. With our new robotic headset, it takes less than 20 seconds for it to lock on. Typically, on most adults, it takes less than 20 seconds for it to lock on to a middle cerebral artery when the patient comes into the ER, or if you're in the operating room, or if you're just doing diagnostic testing on the patient. So tell me, Michael, uh, you know, just being a veteran, uh, what when you walk into the ER or something like that, what are some of the symptoms that is called being happening in your body w w that this system would pick up on? Sure. So we get patients all the time in the private sector that we come into the hospital and have with dizzy woozies. Um, sometimes they'll have facial droopage on one side, meaning they have typically have a stroke, or they come in saying they just don't feel right. They got a massive headache, or we should be testing with TCD to see what's going on in the intracranial system. All too often, we're scanning with our ultrasounds down here and getting what's going on below the brain, but we're not getting what's in the brain. And that's all important, very, very important. Beautiful. And like you said, this test is very, very quick, very efficient. And it's something that you could probably put into a standard of practice. If, if there's any type of symptoms, the veteran could be checked out very quickly. Is exactly. The, we can set it up if you're using it in the ER. Typically, they can get a waveform, you know, within five minutes after the patient coming in. Uh, the system takes about 20 seconds once you get the, the headgear on. It's very simple to apply. It's simple. It's soft. It's nice and easy to put on. Bilateral, the robot just takes over and takes a waveform. Would you like to see how quick it is? Absolutely. Please, let's go ahead and share. I'm going to blow you up here on the screen. All right. Here's what we've can you see my screen? Yes, I can. All right. So you can see the screen of the uh, TCD system? Yes, right behind you. Yes, got it. Nope, nope. I'm looking at the my screen. Uh, let me pop pop down here. Is there something I have to do on my end to... Oh, share? yes. Yes, if you want to share screen down at the bottom, click the share plus button. There right. I go. And I'll add it in. And can you see it there? Uh, not yet.
There we go. And I'll add it to the stream now. Okay. There we go. Great. Now is what I'm going to do is jump onto the live video. Can you see the uh, video? It's not playing yet. Uh, not yet. Right now, it's just showing the selected uh, USA Dolphin installations. Oh, uh, okay. Ooh, that one's not sharing either. Well, darn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, is what we can do is roll through without it. We'll have to let them uh, set up a demo, and we'd be glad to come out there and show them that uh, the screen of it actually doing the study. It well, typically... it's and okay. that's completely fine. Yeah, we can definitely do that again at, at some point. But, you know, you can go ahead and, and kind of talk us through it if you would. Sure. Is What we do typically is we'll take the headset off the patient, simply goes like so, comes off the patient, and then we would put it back on the patient same way. So we put both of the straps in back, pull it back down in back of the Indian like so, pull that down. Move both headgears so that we're over the temporal window on the patient. And then we let her roll. And when we let her roll, it takes typically about 20 seconds to get away from them. And is what we can do is a monitoring sequence where we can actually monitor the patient's, um, the patient's MCA, ACA all at the same time. And sometimes when we get into a patient, we can actually get the MCA, ACA from one side and go all the way to the other. But if you're using the bilateral headgear, we can monitor on both sides of the patient's temporal windows and get bilateral MCA, ACA at the same time. I tell you, Michael, I see no reason why we don't have these placed in every VA and every DOD facility. We're definitely going to be fighting and pushing for this. I think it's just a matter of them not knowing about it yet. And I, I am so grateful that you're here spreading this message. Talk to me a little bit about the robotic uh, headset. What's the difference in the robotic and the non-robotic? The non-robotic headset requires a technologist to adjust the probe. So periodically, if the patient moves, sneezes, or anything of that nature, sometimes you'll have to move it mid-study. So then you have to pull in the Doppler waveform manually again and then lock it in. Where with this system, if it's once we have tracking on, it automatically stays on the MCA so the patient can walk stand, sit, lay down, whatever you need that patient to do or whatever they feel like doing, we can still monitor that patient. It's great in the OR as well. A lot of your patients that you're doing are, you're doing cryonectomies on the patient and they're going into hypervascularization or hyper mode afterwards where hypervasodilation so that we're getting a lot more flow than what we want to have. And that can actually stop, cause a stroke on the patient. It's not uncommon for after we get revascularization from a major carotid stenosis, when we revascularize, the vet vessels have all been um, set to vasodilate, get larger, and they don't come back to normal quickly. And they got all that flow, and they're letting all that flow hit the cranium at one time and stay high. Well, and so that's what we need to do is regulate. We can do it pharmacologically, but the only way we know to do that is if we have a headset on the patient or monitoring the patient. So. so so the, the uses for this is not only in an emergency type situation, you can do just generic screenings. You can you could constantly screen your veteran um, every time, not every time, but at least like once a year, whenever you need set it up where you can keep a track on what's going on in their brain and their blood flow. It, exactly. Another nice thing is let's say you have a patient that comes in and has stenosis, a blockage in a carotid. And we know that they've got maybe a 70% here or 60% and then they have another one in the posterior. Typically, if it's less than 70%, we're not going to do an intervention on that patient. But the combination of the two stenoses could be enough that it's affecting the intracranial flow. Without doing intracranial, the Doppler on the patient, we have no clue if when the patient's working, you know, work, doing something, walking, jogging, doing a, their normal job, if they're maintaining flow or not, enough flow to make them, say, you know, not get dizzy. And so with this is what we can do is put the headgear on. We have the patient hold their breath, need them to hold their breath for 20, 30 seconds if they can, is what we're looking for is the flow will gradually work up on the patient because it's an increase in demand flow because the oxygen is dropping. When that oxygen drops, the vessels should vasodilate and let more flow in. But if the patient's already been compromised for a while, that flow actually drops. 
And when it drops, it's a quick sign for us, okay, we need to do an intervention on this patient because they're, when they exercise, when they need an increase in oxygen, the brain's not getting it. So right. that's gonna be a patient that gets those dizzy woozies, that patient that you know says, I don't know, I was just walking and all of a sudden I fell down. Well, of course you're gonna check cardiac output, cardiac, but we need to check the cranium. All too often we just look at the heart, but the heart doesn't work without the brain. The brain can't work without the heart. I understand completely. And, you know, now with everything that's going on with COVID and all the effects that's happening with COVID that people don't even know, it's another great check uh, to just make sure you're OK. It's, it's a life scan check, you know. Oh, definitely. I've seen, we've had a large increase in the private sector at institutions that are doing a lot of research with co on COVID patients because you get a lot of patients that are getting this brain fog. And we aren't sure if it's a vascular related or not. And we're believing it is vascular related because that's something that's different about COVID. We're finding out that it does affect the vessels. And if it's affecting the vessels, your brain bloated with it. And if we're not checking that to see if the patient's in vasodilation or vasoconstriction, you're going to get brain fog. And we, we really should check that. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about this, Michael. What is the other option like this is beautiful this is the brand new this is what we need to switch them to what's the old school what are they doing right now yep the old school is what we're doing either we're using a small probe on the patient and we're having to hold it manually so you can imagine a technologist trying to stand here and hold the probe now imagine if we were doing this correctly since we're monitoring the patient we should be monitoring both hemispheres at the same time very cumbersome, very hard to do because it is tech dependent. Typically when we do this, when we do it by our hand, we're resting and putting a finger on the patient so we're stable. You can't do that bilaterally. It's, I haven't seen anybody be able to do it yet anyways, manually. So the old school method is that way or using this, which works out well. This is the old school until the robotic head you're in. Is what we had to do with the old school is like I showed, we put the Doppler on the vessel, find the vessel, and lock it in, and then we do the same with the other side. Typical setup on this is about 15, 20 minutes, usually, if you go to a good lab. And so, how much the, better uh, is that? How much better is the new Dolphin as far as, you know, computer technology? You know, give me a little bit of meat on that if you could. Right. The, the computer technology finds the vessel, all the vessels that, it's, that it finds, and we can jump from one vessel to another quite easily with the robotic headset. So if we don't like a certain vessel, it's not really what we're looking at. Maybe it's on the PCA and you can tell that from the waveforms, we can just touch another vessel and have it go to that MCA and lock in there. Once we tell it to lock in on an area, it stays right there. And if the patient moves, walks, whatever, we can just hit um, find, fine tune, and it'll fine tune that vessel again and get it in nice and beautiful again. So this, this takes, Anywhere from, you know, two to three to four minutes to hook up and you're ready. You get away from within 20 seconds. Typically with this, you're looking at 20 minutes. Saving time. Yeah, I love it. So anyone that's watching this for the VA and for the DOD image monitoring and maintenance veteran medical, we stand behind you 100 percent. Anytime you need a demonstration, any literature, um, you reach out to the One Leg Bandit at Maintenance Veteran Medical or uh, put Image Monitoring's website in the chat. You just go ahead and check out their website and reach out to anyone there. They will get in touch with us. We, we work together to ensure that you have the best price and the best you know, overall care that you could possibly have. Um, I'm an amputee veteran. Everybody knows that. And my mission with Maintenance Veteran Medical is making sure we have these cutting edge technologies in the VA and the DOD and not having to wait five years for new technology and then missing out on something. And Michael is awesome. He's always here for us. Anything that you need, we will sit here and make sure that you understand it to its fullest. So uh, thank you very much for, you know, watching and please share this out to all other VAs and DODs. So um, back to you, Michael. Uh, what else would you like to go over today? Uh, how, how's things going with the Falcon? The Falcon's going really well. It's what I'd like to do is show you one thing on the Dolphin that I think you would, is my screen still accessible to you? Yes, it is. I'm gonna go ahead and add it back. Okay. Is what we're gonna do is just jump into a report. One of the things with some of the VAs, they did switch like a lot of the um, 
the private sector did, they switched to using ultrasound for TC for doing transcranial imaging instead of trans TCD transcranial Doppler. The problem with that is your incination rate drops significantly. Where we're up in the 90s for incination rate, incination rate means penetrating the skull, how frequently you can do it. We can do it 90 plus, where a typical TC, uh, TCI and ultrasound you can do it around 65% of the time. The other problem you have with that, a lot of times you need to formulate a report afterwards. You don't get a custom report that actually shows the doctor what's going on. So can you see my screen that shows the circle of Willis here, the cranium? Yes. In the different vessels. So this major vessel is right here. This is called your MCA, your middle cerebral artery. And this is your ACA, your anterior uh, cerebral artery. And, and is what you can do is look at all of these vessels very easily with the TCD and look at their flow patterns to see if they're in vasospasm. One thing that we also do and make it very easy for the doctors is look at a table that gives them all the velocities on one graph. But if you're not used to reading TCD, it's kind of hard to trend the patient. This does it automatically for you. Each time you come in and visit the patient for vasospasm or any other um, procedure like a surgery, you can enter what you're actually doing with the patient, any events, any diagnostic exams, surgery, like you see here on intervention surgeries, and it trends those with your TCD results. Because remember, TCD, some of these patients were monitoring for 15 days out in your hospital. And if you're not getting a trend, the doctor can't recall what was what occurred on that day or the day before. And so we can see very easily what occurred with the patient. And then it gives us a timeline along with the velocities all the way through. Doctors are loving this. We do the Sloan ACA trends. We do the Linegard ratio and a hematocrit trend. This is a new one that people have been asking for because there's a um, relationship between vasospasm and the hematocrit. So the doctors wanted to start trending that. And then you can see here where the worksheet, and this is what everybody's just going nuts over. This is a diagram that automatically comes up. It'll print for the doctor or go to your PACS or to your EMR. And we are certified for, um, for the VA, so no problem there. And you can see that the results, it shows right down the vessels. The doctor knows where the vasospasm is. You can see the reds. When you see red, you know that that's not good. And so we know that that's an area of concern. And the doctor will look at that day in and day out. And we're eventually trying to get that patient, of course, into the green zone. So, Michael, basically what you're saying, I'm a good old country boy, but here's the thing. You you dig a hole with a shovel. you got to have the right tools for what you're trying to do, and this is the right tool for what this for the purposes of this. Perfectly, perfectly said, John. That, that is exactly right. You're not trying to use a tool that was not and is not designed to penetrate the cranium. You're using a, a tool that is 100% designed for intracranial flow. And, and I can see that. And I'm sure any VA and DOD that's watching this is going to see that, you know, uh, we have the money, we have the budget. Let's get the right tools for our veterans to make the right, um, you know, decisions on what we're trying to do here. Uh, let's be 100 percent sure, as close as we can get to 100 percent sure, you know. And uh, exactly the thing, the systems are we really make them. A, they're using them in the ICU, ER. Whenever we can customize the system for that format, they're nice and portable. They do have a battery backup option, so you don't have to plug them in for up to eight hours in some instances. So you can monitor without worrying about when you go next to the bed, having to find that outlet and get that get those waveforms. You don't have to worry about that with the system. Well, you know, we're going to we're going to get this out there, Michael. So this is exactly what we needed to do today. H have a nice little video about the dolphin. Let everyone know about it. Um, you know, it's just it's about information. And a lot of people that knows uh, the one leg like maintenance better medical. Um, I'm all about mass communicating. OK, we can do the onesies and twosies. I believe in getting the information out to as many people as quickly as possible so we can make the best decision. And by you being here today, it's helping me with the mass communicate and letting everyone know uh, what's really going on. Now, uh, you want to go ahead and go over some, some more stuff here on the screen? Well, I, is, this is another table that uh, I didn't show earlier. This is our new slide graph table. This makes it really easy for the physicians as well. I did want to mention that we have the capability of also setting up a reader station. So if your doctors are 
into doing more in-depth review and post-editing, the system will allow them to do so. So you can do all of that um, on the fly with the doctor, either there, present, or in you know a, a day later, and the next day, or in a different location. If some if you have somebody that's doing overreads for you at an alternate location, they want to have the ability to do editing. We have that feature as well. Outstanding. Well, <clears throat> I tell you. It's time. The time is now. You know, it's the spending quarter here with the VA and the DOD. We're going to get this information out there. Is there any last uh, things you'd like to say about the Dolphin before we switch over to the Falcon? Um, you know, no, we are here for demos for you anytime. So we do a, a demo. We have an hour, an hour and a half demo, depending on what your needs are and how in depth you really want to get into TCD. And then the nice thing, if you're not doing TCD, but you're doing TCI or nothing to do with the cranium at all, which I hope you, you are, but if you aren't, we can take you from soup to nuts. We have multiple layers, of, multiple levels of training that we offer with the system, one to three days typically. And then if you need um, extra help down the road, maybe interpretation training, everything, we have all different packages for education all the way from the technologists doing the study, all the way up to the physician interpreting the study, whatever level they need. Well, I'll tell you, Michael, um, as we transition over here, we just want to do a brief, a few minutes on, on the Falcon. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of bids, winning a lot of business with the Falcon, and we're going to continue to push on that. But um, is there any new updates or anything you'd like to go over uh, and just let people briefly know about the Falcon? Sure. The Falcon also has all the similar features as far as post-editing, Everything that you would have on the on the Dolphin as well, both soft, software packages are sort of intertwined in their application and the, how easy they are to use. The nice thing also, we are, have a couple of institutions that are expanding our horizons because they've said, well, geez, we could use a combo unit. So they're actually purchasing TCD and Physiologic, the Falcon, on the same platform. So they have a dual platform system. So it prevents you from having to have two different devices, you know, two different computers and two different cards. If your volume is such that you don't need both at the same time to be using them at the exact same minute, then it's a beautiful application. So if it's in the lab and it does save the hospital money and it saves space for you. Let's talk about that a, a second, Michael. We was talking about the preventative side of things. How long would it take to do both tests if they were on one cart and, and just check the whole system out? Sure. If we're doing a physiologic exam, say if we're just doing a basic ABI with toe pressures, which I highly recommend, and then a TCD exam, we're talking about a half hour time frame right around there. And the nice thing with that, we've checked 100% of the peripheries. Typically, the head isn't considered a periphery, the arms and legs are, but it's separate from the core. So it can be, so you're getting a whole peripheral inspection of the body in about 30 minutes. And it really helps us decide what direction we need to take the patient. And it really, it lets you know how you're doing blood flow wise in your whole body if you did both of those. And you're talking 30 minutes. Um, and there's a, definitely a group of veterans, considering the majority of them are diabetic, at a 63% of veterans are diabetic, that need to be checked out like this. I, I think on a regular basis, and so once a year would be a good check. Uh, it definitely would, because it's so much easier for us to diagnose earlier and either change their habits, you know, exercise habits, diet habits, smoking position, things of that nature, or putting them on pharmacologic early, as we all know, versus waiting until it's a major problem, they have an ulcer or they've had a stroke. It's much more costly to the system and almost and always worse for the patient. Agreed. Now, you know, a lot of folks make big money off of people getting sick, you know, but if we flip the script and I always tell people, especially at the VA, because we have the chance at the VA, if we flip the script to caring about right now and looking forward, looking instead of after the fact, we are going to save so many people's lives, save, you know, add countless years to your lifespan and we can do it. Like we're at the point right now at the VA, we could actually do this. We can scan forward. And um, I know that people are talking about doing this, but I hope that people let them, 
you know, the money doesn't get involved and push people away. I hope that in the VA, we can start moving forward. And I know that they're coming up with this technology because in some of the scans that they're doing now, they're talking about scanning people with these high resolution MRIs and doing them, you know, every year to check what's really going on with your body. And this could be another part that we can do with the VA. So all my VAs and DODs out there, just hear my voice. I'm trying to change the world. We're doing great things. That's why we have these partners that we have. Um, we have a great vision. So Help us bring these products to your VA and DOD and watch the results. I guarantee you we're saving money and saving people's lives. So, um, Michael, uh, I really appreciate your time today. We've been going for uh, 25 minutes and, um, you know, it's just a, a blessing what we're doing. I, I know that we're doing good things every day. And when you, when you work like this, it's not really work. It's just, you know, doing what you want to do, you know, and I know you feel the same way about your products. Well, I definitely do. I, you know, I, Went into medicine over 30 years ago, did a brief one for maxillofacial ablation and uh, laser surgery. It wasn't, we weren't saving lives. We we're just making people prettier, you know, and I, did, I didn't get the the feeling I do when I flip back to vascular because our, we are really saving and improving lives with our technology and with, with at the hands of the frontliners, all of our physicians and our technologists out there. If they use our equipment, they will save lives and they will improve lives of millions. And that's what we're hoping for. Well, Michael, I appreciate your time today. Any final words that you want to say uh, before we sign off here? No, well, I'd just like to thank you, John, for the great job and keep it up. We're enjoying our relationship with Manus Medical and you guys are fantastic. We look forward to working with you for many years to come. Hope you have a great day today, Michael, and we'll be in touch. Thank you much, John. Take so everyone, again, that's Michael Talcott, uh, VP at Image Monitoring USA. And um, I'm just so thankful for my fellowship here, uh, what we've grown into here at Manus Veteran Medical. We're doing great things. If you're looking to bring your products into the VA, into the DOD, and you need a partner that knows what they're doing, I am uh, the man for that. Just reach out to me at the One Lake Bandit at ManusVeteranMedical.com. You know, a lot of times you have to run stuff through these big guys. Uh, everybody has to do business with primes. But do they care about you? I don't know. Um, I really don't think so. Uh, but either way, um, we'll we'll deal with that. Maintenance Veteran Medical is going to grow. And like I told all the primes when I come onto the scene, they may not know me today. But uh, in five years from now, this moment, uh, they will absolutely know Maintenance Veteran Medical. But uh, either way, hope uh, hope all y'all have a wonderful day. I've got an, another couple of lives coming up this week. Uh, the Q2 solution. We're going to continue to let everyone know what's going on with the Q2. And uh, we're, we're, it's just another product that has to get into the VA, into the DODs. But uh, again, y'all have a wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Thank you very much.